Hi, I'm Dennis Hall, 1995 world champion in Greco-Roman wrestling, also a 1996 Olympic silver medalist. Today I will be showing you techniques from the Russian tie, which will hopefully help your athletes improve their performances. The Russian tie is a move where you grab one arm, and it's, you're grabbing just like you're shaking your opponent's hand, but you're not going to shake his hand, you're going to grab his wrist, and the other hand comes back on the back of the uh, tricep, beginning of bicep right here. Now all I'm going to do is I want to create angles because everything off the Russian tie is off angles. Some guys won't feel comfortable with uh, the hand that's controlling the wrist like this, so if they want, once they get control of the bicep, you can change your grip. All it is is a quick change to right here. The most important thing about the Russian tie is keep an arm close to your body. I don't want my opponent to be able to keep it next to his body because that takes away all my offense when I'm trying to move him and set up my techniques on the Russian tie. So big thing, keep the Russian tie close to your body. My shoulder is going to be uh, butted up against his shoulder right behind it so I can get pressure and I can move him with just one arm if I have to. So I can pull and move them right here. So the keys to the Russian tie, number one, you want you want to grab, grab his uh, wrist right here, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my shoulder behind his, right on top. My shoulder should be butted up like I said before. If I want to re-grab, I can re-grab the position. So I grab, grab the Russian tie right here. The first and foremost thing that you want to be able to do is you want to be light on your feet so you can move them, push them forward, and pull. There's a lot of the different techniques come off of motion. So the big thing that athletes need to be able to do, first of all, get the correct position, which entails controlling the arm, keeping it close to your body, like I said, and being able to move your opponent. And there's, there's different things that you can do to make it easier for your uh wrestlers to be able to move your opponent. One thing I like to do is I do what I call push, push, pull. And by push, push, pull, I mean I'm going to push my opponent, push, push, and then I'm going to pull. Push, push, pull. And one thing when I pull, I'm, I'm pulling on the arm and I'm trying to pull it down, is that's what's going to make my opponent want to keep his arm up. So I push, push, and then I pull. Right there, that's almost one, one of my first techniques that I'll be showing off the Russian tie. So, so you're in here, one thing to get the athletes uh, feeling comfortable, number one, remind them to constantly keep pressure with their shoulder. If the shoulder comes in front, you lose a lot of your pressure. Now, I can push like this, but I'm going to have a hard time pulling because I, I don't have weight on his shoulder. So it's going to make it hard for me to pull his arm if I don't have the pressure on his shoulder. Right here. One thing I, I like to do after I push, push, and I pull, is I'll come with a quick push, and then I might hit, hit a type of an attack. So it's push, push, pull, then attack. Push, push, pull, attack. Push, push, pull, then some type of attack. So that's one good way to start out drilling kids on the Russian ties. Just get them comfortable with the position. One other important thing about the Russian tie, once I, I grab my opponent's wrist and I uh, turn, I want to be almost perpendicular to my opponent right here, which is real, real important because this is what's going to give me the pressure. If I'm straight on right here, it's going to be harder to drive him right here and then harder to pull because my shoulder slips. So it's real important to almost get perpendicular with your opponent and be on your toes when you push it right here. Push it. Pull, right there. When you have the Russian tie, one thing I like to do is I like to make sure my head, my head is in position right here. I don't want my opponent's head right here because that's going to make it harder for me to control him. Because what what his head does, I'm going to show you from this side. What his head does, if I let his head in position, is it bumps my shoulder down instead of my shoulder being on the side right here. If he gets head position on me. Now I lose my power with my shoulder. So it's real important when I have my Russian tie to keep head position right here. To keep the head position and work on pulling right there. So real, really important head position. I want to block his head and I can actually pull 
pull it, pull it right there so I can make him feel uncomfortable right there. So I'm in right here, pulling the arm to my body right here. When I'm pushing, the time, I don't mind if you let that arm come away from your body a little bit when you're pushing. But as soon as you pull, it's back to the body. When I'm in the Russian tie right here, my feet are, is going to be real important. I want to get to the side, like I said, being perpendicular right here. Controlling, pushing right here. One thing that I like to do is I'll give a yank on his arm behind me. I'm going to pull him a little bit behind me right here. Push, pull. Big thing is real short, choppy steps. If you watch my feet, when I'm moving my opponent, I never take any huge steps. It's all going to be real, real short right here. Pull, push, push, pull, push, pull. Right there. So it's real important. Keep your feet moving. If I, when you have a Russian tie, you want to always keep your opponent moving. If I let him stay stationary, he's going to be able to get his arm free. Not not totally be able to get it free, but I lose my pressure on him if I stay stationary. So the important thing, like I said, if I stay stationary, then he can start working on this wrist or come up here, peel my hand off right there. So it's real important. You want to keep your feet moving right there. Because he never know, he's, gonna, he's never going to know which way I'm coming to attack him if I'm constantly pulling him. Setups for the Russian tie. How do you get into it? Is how a lot of people, what a lot of people want to know. How do you get into the Russian tie? The first one that I like to use is when a guy just posts on you right here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to reach up. I'm going to grab his wrist right here, and I'm going to come across. I'm going to pull the arm, and at the same time I pull the arm, I'm turning my head, looking over my shoulder right here. Now I'm in a good Russian tie position from there. Okay, uh, uh, next one, collar tie. He's on my head, he's hanging. All I'm going to do, when I decide to go for the Russian, I'm going to look over my shoulder. Right there, my hand comes off. When I look over my shoulder, hand comes off, and I go straight into the Russian tie. The nice thing about uh, this way of getting the Russian tie compared to just going out there and grabbing the wrist, is when, when I have, when he's on my uh, sh shoulder or on my back of my neck rather, when he's on the back of my neck and I go to it, my hand comes into position which most kids are comfortable. This position is where most of your athletes will feel, feel comfortable with the Russian tie. This is a little bit different feeling for a lot of the athletes out there. So that's why I really like pulling the Russian off of a collar tie. Or if a guy's Got an inside tie on me right here. Boom. Pull it off. Grab the wrist. And, and I, I rotate my elbow high so I can get to the Russian tie. Right there. So right here, I'm going to grab his wrist. I'll be in here battling in high school. Grab the wrist. Pull it down. Russian tie. So you got two ways to get to the Russian tie. One's on the collar tie where I just peel it off and pull it down. Next one, he's inside position right here. Step, pull it off. Um, another way that if we're just out here battling right here and we're just kind of posting, we're fighting right here, I'm just going to grab right here. I'm going to grab his wrist and I'm going to pop his arm up. So I grab the wrist, pop the arm, come to the Russian tie. Probably looks a lot all, all the same, but Overall, it's a change in position. We're in here battling, and the guy's just posting. He's blocking. He doesn't want me to get close to him. So I grab it, pull it down. Now I'm nice and close and making him uncomfortable right here with the Russian tie. Um, great thing about the Russian tie is there's no distance. Guys cannot stall when you have a Russian tie. They can stall. They can back up, but they're going to get cautioned by the referees. That's why I really like this position for high school, college, and any, basically any style of wrestling because my opponent can't, the only thing he really can do is work to get out and he's on defense the whole time. That's why I really like the Russian tie series. Another thing that's great about the Russian tie series 
Sam, I'm ahead by a point in a match. With 30 seconds left and we're on our feet. There's 30 seconds left. I can grab the Russian tie. And now how's he going to get to my leg? He can attack my leg, go after my leg. Right there. Try and get to my leg. And it looks like I'm being aggressive right here. Looks like I'm doing all the work. Right there. So it's a great, great control position. Like I said, when I'm ahead by a point, it's going to make my opponent have a hard time trying to catch me within the last 15, 30 seconds, even 45 seconds. If I keep going to a Russian tie, you know, he's going to have a hard time scoring. So it's real important. That's why I like the Russian tie so much is it's a great controlling position. If he's outside, I'm just going to rotate right here. Rotate just like an arm drag, but I come right here and my hand drops. I'm inside right here. I'm going to clear it right here. I'm going to clear, push, and just come to the Russian tie series right here. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to grab the same, same side wrist right here. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to reshake right here. And it, it's almost like the one I sh showed earlier. I'm right here. I grab the same side arm because we're getting ready to battle. Re-grab it. Re-grab it with my uh, left hand. Come to the uh, Russian tie position right here. My shoulder's in position. And if I want to re-grab, I can re-grab once I have control of his arm. One more time. I'm going to come out. I'm going to grab the hand. Notice one thing. Where's my head? My head's straightening them up right now. Right there. When I have the Russian tie, most important thing is to get my head underneath his to lift him a little bit. If he has his head position on me and I'm going after a Russian tie, he's going to be able to keep his elbow back because I can't get my shoulder. I'm going to show you from this position. If I go to reach for it and he has head position on me, I'm going to have a hard time prying his arm out right here. And if I do get his arm, my shoulder's not going to be in position against his shoulder like I need it to. So I'm going to lose a lot of effectiveness. One way to beat that right off, off the whistle or off the bat, right here. Look where my head is. I'm controlling head position, and that's the key in wrestling, creating angles. And that, that's what's so important. I want to get his head away from his body so he loses a lot of power. When his head's tight to his shoulder, he's got a lot of strength right there. So I want to get my head in position. And I grab the same wrist, re-grab it, baseball grip right here. Grab the position, and if I want to change, I'll change. The athletes can change. Um, and like I said, the other one that a lot of coaches might might not like because they'll think that the guys guys can uh, control, but if you get quick at it, turn this way a little bit. Right here, it's just like you're shaking hands. One thing, I, I'm not standing square, square in front of my opponent and reaching like this. Look at my arms. See how my arms extended from my body? What I'm doing is I'm creating an angle. Look at my head position. Now I grab it and go to my Russian tie, tie from there. So it's real important. Instead of being straight on with my opponent, I want to create a little bit of an angle before I reach the grab. If I stay straight on, if I stay straight on and I go to grab it, my opponent can just hit a, hit a single right there. Hit a near arm right there, just drop, hit a sweeping single right there. He's good. He'll be able to do that if I'm not creating an angle before him. So it's real important when I go out there, I create the angle, look at my head. Try hitting one on me right now. My head blocks him. Real important. You got to have your head in position. So I get my head in position, I grab, and I go to attack my Russian tie from here. So that's another way to get into it. Basically, anytime a guy's inside on you, get him off. Because right now he's being heavy. If he's inside on this side, I want to get, I want to br bring it down and start circling and control right there. So real important, don't let a guy be heavy on you. Instead of him being heavy on you, you need to change the position. And best way to change it that I found in my wrestling is being able to take the Russian tie. Get him off you. You don't want him being heavy. Change of position anytime you don't like it. Guy's got inside control. I'm gonna grab and pull it down. 
great drill for high school kids, being able to bring that arm down, you know, and, and that's one drill that I do pretty much when I run practice here at the university at Stevens Point. I'll have my college guys, and, and one of the drills we do for two minutes straight before we get ready to live wrestle is we're just going to work with each other, and I'm going to work on getting the Russian tie, and he's going to work on getting the Russian tie. Right there, he gets pressure, I go into the Russian tie, head position, let him go, he goes, right here. He's gonna go, right here. I bring it down, move him around, work in my position, keeping my feet moving, he goes. And he's gonna have to work at it a little bit, I'm gonna make him work, right there. It's a great drill that uh, high school coaches can implement any time into their practice, so. Once the kids get good at the Russian tie, I, I'd uh, prefer, prefer you to have the guys live wrestle two minutes, two minutes every other, every third practice with the Russian tie. The reason the Russian tie is so effective in high school, in high school and college, is because of the controlled position. Uh, and there's a lot of different things that I can do off the Russian tie where my opponent has not much he can do off the Russian tie. So the first thing that I'm going to go to off the Russian tie, number one, I, once, I, once I have control of the Russian tie, is just a basic single leg takedown where I'm going to throw the, throw the arm across the body and I'm going to tack the leg right, uh, the single leg right here. I'm in good position, single leg. The reason I like this, this single leg takedown is because in high school, when, when kids shoot single legs, when kids shoot single leg takedowns, when they shoot their single leg takedowns, they're on their knee. Half the time, the head is down on on, on the single leg, and then you got to work to regain position, keeping the head up, chest or head in the center of the chest. The reason I like this single leg off the Russian tie so well is because I'm not. All I have to do, all I have to do is squat. I'm not dropping to my knees right here. All I'm doing is I'm squatting. So I have the Russian tie right here and I throw the arm across. Once I get the arm across, this arm securing the leg and I drop down making sure I'm in good position and then you got all your finishes, your step behind which works real well. You got your step behind finish right there. Got my Russian tie. I'm moving my opponent. I step behind him. My footwork I'm going to step behind, my shoulder slams into his thigh right here. Now I got all the weight transferred onto that foot, I'm going to step and block and, and finish that way. You can also finish it a ton of different ways uh, from the single leg position right here. I'm not going to show all the different finishes, but the key thing, best way to drill this for high school coaches or uh, any type of coaches out there. Just throw it on. The footwork is the key. I'm right here. I'm going to take, I'm going to step to my foot, my, my other foot, and step behind at the same time I'm passing his arm to the front. My arm comes down, and I lock my hands. My head's in good position, and I'm going to block. Footwork is the key. Right here, I got the Russian tie. I'm going to do like a little hop step. Right there. Pull him, make him want to pull back up. When he pulls back up, that's when I'm going to step behind. Right here, my foot's blocking. Right here, my shoulder slamming it in, in his thigh. I release his hand, lock my hands. Now all I'm doing is I'm keeping constant pressure with my shoulder right here and driving him over my uh, toes or my foot rather. So I'm right here. I have the Russian tie. I'm pulling, pulling. He's pulling back up. I, I let it go. Right here, step. Lock my hands in good solid position. The thing that's great, like I said, as you could tell, I was basically in my stance when I hit. When, when you look at it from behind, I'm basically in my stance when I hit my single right here. And that's what high school coaches will really like about this single leg takedown is you're in your stance the whole time so kids won't won't be all stretched out right here I have the Russian tie I'm gonna circle right here 
Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this hand up. Right here, throw it up and sweep across right here to a far side double with my head up. Anytime guys are posting on you, they're vulnerable for a double leg takedown. I hit my knee and drive up. Uh, the thing that's real important, pull them right here, pop. It's going to feel a little awkward at first, but the key is really jamming that hand up in the air when you go and really changing your elevation right here. Boom, boom. I'm underneath them. Right here in good double leg position. Step up and finish. So we're right here. He's posting on me, I pull him right here, I pop up, double leg position, finish. He might even have my head. If he has my head, I just drop underneath, right there. So he has my head, all I'm going to do is I'm going to duck my head down, right here. Duck it down, duck it down, and hit my double. So guy has my head some reason, duck it down. Duck it down. Just push your hand. When, when I duck it down, see how I'm pushing it to him? Right there. That's the key when he has my head. See how I push it to him right there. That way his arm's trapped when I'm coming up and across to finish my double. One more time. I pull. I'm going to Throw this up, change my level, drop underneath, hit my double. I got the Russian tie right here, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull his arm away from his body, and at the same time I pull, I'm going to release the hand that's in the back and snap his head down. The key thing on this snap down, that it, when, when I do it, when I pull down right here, and I bring my hand up to club him in the back of the head right here is this hand the opposite hand comes up and helps pull at the same time you probably didn't catch it the first time right here so i pull down right here now i snap and i gotta shoot my uh leg back at the same time because if i don't shoot it back my opponent's gonna grab my leg so we're right here i'm pushing right here i'm pulling them down and now all i'm gonna do go behind for the uh, two-point takedown. Pressure, pressure, pull, snap, go behind. Right here, one more time real slow. Pushing in, pull, creating a little bit of space so I can pull my hand out. Big thing, smack them hard. I want, when, when I pull right here, and I pull my hand out, my hand's coming, and it's just creeping over his back to the back of his neck, and I pull. Now I'm just going to block, keeping my hips down. Next technique uh, that has uh, worked really successful for me, um, I've hit it in some moral tournaments, is uh, the, hip, the basic uh, hip toss where I'm going to take my opponent over my hip. Big thing on this is motion is a big factor. I want to get my feet, my opponent's feet moving right here. When I go to hip toss him, I'm going to pull him, pull him, I pull up and away. So I want his arm right here to come up so he has to step behind me. So the key is I'm going to have to lift my elbow, but at the same time i got to control his wrist right here. So we're right here. I pull him. See how he's already loaded for a hip toss? And I, and I can throw him to the mat, and when he, once he hits, I'm going to show you how to finish. So I'm right here, I'm pushing, got my feet moving right here. I pull. Now all I'm doing is I'm pulling this to my body, right there. He goes flying, stay right there. My hand is still controlling his, his uh, wrist. What I do with that is I come across the face. I release the wrist, come across the face, and I'll cover them right here. And then I can come through the crotch, work for pivot combination, whatever. I don't care. 
but that's one of the best ways to finish. Don't release the hand on the wrist until you got him on his back. So we're right here. I pull him behind me and pull him up. See how he's almost standing straight up? Right here, pivot. Right there. Keep that arm until you're coming across the, the, the face. Right here and blocking. Working for a pin. Doing a hip toss right here. I'm pushing. I get him to step. See him? See how his uh, left foot stepped when I pulled him? That's the key right there. He's stepping. He's loaded on my hip right underneath right here. Now all I do is I change my levels, pull on across my body, and right there. See how I got the hand? I go to cover. Lock and cover. One more time. I'm in here. I'm pushing. I give him a pull. Now all I do is pop my hips right there. Lock, cover. If your opponent grabs your head and you uh, need a five-point move, this is a great position to make a, make a guy think that he feels comfortable. Let him, let him grab your head. I, I tuck my head actually in his chest. A lot of times I'll tuck my head in his chest. Natural reaction is for your opponent to grab your head. And that's what I want him to do. I want him to grab my head. Because on this one, all I'm going to do, this is going to be a headlock off this position. The hand that's on the wrist comes up and wraps and pulls tight right here. My other hand, I'm going to pull this arm, just rotate it till I can't rotate his arm anymore. And then I come over the top. My feet do not move on this headlock. And that is the key on the headlock. If your feet move, you're telegraphing it. So keep your feet, feet still. You're right here. I push, push my head down right here. I'm going to release the wrist. Block right here. And at the same time, I'm blocking. I'm clubbing sideways. Bringing my arm. Trying to roundhouse the guy. One more time. I'm going to release. Block. Pull it to me. Remember, keeping this tight right here. Now all I'm doing is rotating, pivoting my hips down, planting my hand on the mat. Now I go to my headlock finish. Once my hand touches the mat, that's when I lock my hands. With the Russian tie, I want to show you why you don't uh, want to lock your hands around his head when you're doing a headlock, because your opponent's going to roll you through at, on the way down because your elbow's going to be trapped. Okay, grip. I, I tuck my head. I set him up for the headlock. I go right here, lock my hands. My one hand that I had posting on the mat isn't there for the post. And that's why it's real important to have the post there, post on the mat. So when I throw my headlock, right there, my hands posted. Now I lock my hands. This next technique is really easy, real easy technique for high school kids. Main thing, I want to push, push, push into my opponent, push in him, get a little bit of reaction. If he's just put, if he's not doing anything, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack his waist. It's called a quick go behind. So if the opponent doesn't, doesn't push back into me right here, boom, I'm going to push his arm across and attack the waist right here. Now once you get behind him, oh. Uh, you can lift him, take, trip him back down, I don't care. But I'm pushing into my opponent, he's not giving me any resistance. So I throw the arm across his body. Right here. Throw it across, coming behind. Now I can lift him, take him back down. Quick go behind. One more time. I show it from this angle, right here. I'm pushing into my opponent, my opponent's not doing anything. I'm going to throw his arm across his body and just attack behind. Big thing, you got to get used to your feet moving quick. Short steps, one more time. I'm right here, I'm pushing. My opponent's just stalling and he's backing up. So I'm going to attack him. Make him look bad. Maybe get a stalling against my opponent. Next one that I'm going to do is when I'm pushing into my opponent, pushing into him and he's resisting me. He's meeting my force. He's coming back to me, to me right here. I'm going to pull and I want to post his hand right here on the mat. I want to get his one hand that I'm controlling with my wrist on, posted on the mat. 
so I can get behind. Right here, I got my Russian tie. I'm driving into my opponent. A lot of, like I said, a lot of times when I'm pushing, I push him right here. I push him with uh, my shoulder to get him to resist. When he resists, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop step, pull his hand down, and come behind. Right there, real simple, real safe. Great technique. Push and push and pull. That's one type of drill that you can have the kids. That, uh, you can have kids working all day long. Push, push, pull. This next technique is when the guy's squaring up on me. I, I'm coming around, guy squares up on me. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit inside penetration with my left knee, and that one's gonna drop in the center between, between his legs, and all I'm gonna hit is a regular fireman's carry. So I'm right here, guy squaring up on me right here. I'm gonna pull this arm out, at the same time release the wrist, drop to both knees, his hands are gonna come up the crack, crack him in the back right there, and I'm gonna pull hard. He squared up with me, he might be holding on to my head or what, wrist or whatever, I don't care what he's doing, but the key right here is to, is to take a deep inside penetration right here, you got, you can grab something, I don't care. Right there, he's got my elbow, I'm going to drop underneath and pull this arm tight. There's your fireman's carry off the Russian tie. Real good, safe technique for high school, for grade school, any type of wrestling. Right here. Boom. Drop. Yeah. Make sure you're controlling the bicep right here. I don't even have to use this arm. If I'm pulling hard, the reason I show it that way is so that you see that I'm really pulling hard with the arm that's on the tricep. One more time. Fireman Scary, my opponent's squaring up on me a little bit. I'm going to pull this arm out, drop underneath, and finish. Main thing is the footwork. Make sure your kids drill getting underneath quick, dropping to both knees. When I hit it, I drop to both knees. Right there. That's that's the thing. If they can drop to both knees, they'll be able to hit the fireman's carry easy. Uh, there's another position off the Russian tie, and I, I like to use. I call it a reverse Russian. It's a lot different. A lot of people haven't seen too much of it. Right here, I have the regular Russian tie. Right now, all I'm going to do is, is I'm going to change my hand position, and I'm going to slam my right shoulder and hand that I'm controlling the wrist in his chest and pull on his arm right here. Okay? So, and the nice thing about this is I, I might be using a Russian tie, he's stalling, I can't really get anything. So I change the position on him. The legs are available for elbow shoves to doubles or high crotch right there. So that's why I really like this combination of the Russian tie. I'm pushing, can't get anything. Pull my shoulder. One thing, I'm pulling this arm down in a circular position right there, which really makes this work well. So we're in here. I got head position on my opponent. Still can't get anything going. I step a little bit in front, put my shoulder. One thing, I like to have my shoulder underneath his so I can pull right there. And then when I decide to go for whatever I'm gonna go for, it's easier to, to get underneath them because if my shoulder's on top right here, I don't have as much pull. I can't pull. So it's real important, get your shoulder underneath. And my shoulder, I wanna hit my, sh my shoulder right here. I want it right there in his chest. Just work on doing this. Best drill for kids, it's doing this, working your steps. One thing, once I get this control position, once I get the reverse rushing or whatever you want to call it, I'm right here, I pull, just have the kids move around. Have them drive the guy forward. Right here, there's not much your opponent can do. Right here. I'm being super heavy on this arm. This arm will get worn out if you hang on it hard enough. 
especially if you've been doing a uh, regular Russian tie, pulling on it. Okay, I got my position. I'm going to circle them towards me, circle. Now I'm just going to do an elbow shove to a double leg. Right there, drive across. The key is the elbow shove. Right here. I'm circling right here. I'm going to elbow shove. See that? How his elbow comes across. And now I've changed my levels, drop to my knee, up and across. I'm right here. I circle, get him to step, elbow shove, drop, hit my knee, drive up. Right there. Next one, high crotch. Basically the double leg, except you're attacking one leg with your head on the outside. Right here, I circle, get him to step, push out, arm across. Hit my high crotch right here. I'm going to wrap, come up to the crotch, and lift. So I got my reverse rushing right here. Got my reverse rushing. I just pulled on it, got his arm heavy. I'm going to elbow pass, shoot my high crotch right here, my head up, my back straight, step up, and left. Right there, taking my opponent to the mat. Okay, I got the reverse Russian. I just changed off from my regular Russian right here. I changed off, I pull. Now I'm gonna hit an inside step drag right here where my leg stepping between, between his leg. I'm gonna reach his far hip and I'm gonna lift him down. This is a great change off technique right here. I pull, get him stepping. I'm gonna reach up, grab his arm, step to the waist right here and I'm pulling. See how I got him extended? Right there, I got his upper body up and all I'm doing is stepping in between. So I'm pulling his arm, pulling his arm, stepping, and I can pivot if you don't want to lift. I don't care which finish you use. And the nice thing about this position is usually I can get near fall off when I take him down. Regular rush and tie, chains off, drag. Pivot, get some near fall. Look at my foot. The hand that I'm controlling a tricep with this reverse rush, that's the side that the foot steps deep. Look how deep I am. I'm way behind. If I step right here, I'm going to have a hard time securing it. But as I get to right here, the big difference is this leg's, this leg's being blocked. Right there. See how I didn't even do nothing? And his hip came off the mat. So uh, I'm right here, I pull, got him to step, I step deep, now all I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot my hip right here, pivot my hip. This next technique that I'm going to show, same position, off the reverse, I'm right here, right here, rush the tie, chain off, right here I'm circling hard, got his arm extended from his body, that's the key. Once I get his arm extended from his body, I'm going to tuck my head right underneath, bring my head up, and bear hug. I'm going to show it from this side so I can see. Right here, I'm going to tuck my head underneath. Watch my foot, footwork too. Right here, I step outside, step almost right next to him right here. My head's underneath. So we're right here. I step, and I pull this arm up and away so, so his body comes up. If I'm holding on to it down here, it's going to be hard for me to come up. So I pull the arm up, cut a little body, and go for a pin. I'm circling right here. I get him to step. At the same time he steps, I step. And now I keep this arm. I elevate this arm up. And I'm going to stay nice and tight to him right here. Notice how my one leg's behind him. Because now I'm just going to float to the side. This is a real good technique. A lot of the ru uh, Russian wrestlers are great at this position. They'll come right here, hit it. Boom, there's, a, there's probably gonna be a pin afterwards. So we're right here. I got position, duck, and attack. Taking him straight from his feet to his back. One thing I always like to say, a lot of Coaches don't believe in throwing or whatever, but they'll believe in getting to the body and having a tight locket uh, as a bear hug. So it's real important um, 
kids need to develop a five-point move is somewhere in their high school or college or international career when they're wrestling, they're going to be they're going to be behind by five or more. And it's real important to be able to have a big-time throw that you can take guys to their back and put them away with. And that's why I, I really like this technique right here because it's nothing fancy. I'm right here. I change off to the reverse Russian duck and attack. I just changed off from, from my uh, Russian tie to my reverse Russian right here. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a drag to what I call a reach around. Reach around his back. And I'm yanking and pulling as hard as I can. So I'm right here. I got the regular Russian. I change off right here. I'm pulling. I'm going to reach up high in his armpit right here. Now I'm going to step. Do a quick hop step. And just pull. Make sure you're heavy on the hip. Right here. This hand. Lay down so you can see. This, this hand is really pulling hard. See how hard I'm pulling? I can pull his hip up. That's how hard you got to be pulling when you do the drag. To make it look real easy and, and successful. Pushing, changing off. Change off! Right there. Pull him down. Nice, safe, easy technique. One thing I want to say with the Russian tie series is you never know what type of defense you're going to get from an opponent. I showed you a lot of different opportun scoring opportunities. Now you're going to have to figure out exactly how they go into play. You know, every opponent you run into is going to give you a different look. One, one might be trying to just give me a couple different looks. Right here. He grabs my elbow right here. I'm going to headlock. He grabs my wrist. I'm coming around the back or single leg again. Grab my wrist again. Right there. I'm in on my single. He's blocking, keeping his hips away. Right here, not blocking, but just with your head. He beat me on head position right here. What, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to snap. Right there. Push. Right here. Depending on any type of motion he gives me. Right here. Drop down. You're just going to have to play around with the Russian tie to see what feels most comfortable to you. And the thing is, you're going to get a ton of different looks. But you're going you're gonna to figure out, if you practice this move enough, you'll be able to figure out what techniques are going to work for you, what ones don't fit in your style. But I'm sure there's going to be one that fits into your style off this tape. One other thing I want to show you before we wrap up the tape is when a guy has a Russian tie on you, what do you do? How do you get out of it? A lot of high school coaches have no clue. They just push on the head and you see a scene. If you push on the head, it can be dangerous because you can headlock right there. If I'm grabbing right here, he can drop down and, and uh, hit a single or whatever right there because I'm exposed. If I, come, if I come to the elbow right here, he can reach around my back with, with, yep, reach around right there. He can reach around. So a lot of times trying to get out of the Russian tie gets, into your, gets you into trouble. So it's real important to know an effective way. One of the best ways I've come up with getting out of the Russian tie which not many people in the country know, right here is come underneath, block on a bicep right here, and pull the arm off. It's, it's using your arm like a lever right here. And then I go into my underhook. So uh, he's got the Russian tie right here. I got to fight my hand inside in between my arm and his arm, block on the tricep, pull the arm down. But the key, if he has a Russian tie and he's got it close to his body and he's pulling on it, there's no way I can get it in there. So what I do then is I attack the hand that's closest. But the thing is, he can't hesitate. If you hesitate, he's going to control you and he's going to, and he's going to score on you. So grab the hand that's up closest so you can get your arm out. Right here, pull the arm out. Get the hand back. If he doesn't have it that close, as soon as you feel him getting the Russian tie, say, say he's going after Russian right there, I got to get my hand inside. See how it was automatic natural reaction right there? Get the hand inside. Now I can control him. I've had a lot of success using the Russian tie series. In 1995, I became the U.S.'s second world champion 
and a lot of it was due to being able to control my opponent in the Russian tie, having his arm pulling on it, getting his arms tired. So he wasn't able to fight as hard against me as I was able to fight against him from saving my strength. Um, one great thing about the Russian tie is anybody can do it. All you have to do is get the control, learn the position, and I believe uh, if you have your athletes working the Russian tie, they'll be able to score from it and they'll get comfortable. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes a lot of dedication and a lot of perseverance and believing, believing in the move that it's going to work.